to. How are you getting on, you dirty, dirty, dandy warhols of a listener? <laughs> wow, what a pleasure to have you here tonight, uh, or tomorrow morning, or whatever, whatever time of the day you're tuning into us, to, to, to join us on this, this snowcast that is a bit of a throwback. We haven't done one of these in, in quite a while. Uh, we put out in social media today, we looked for your questions, your topics, and you answered an abundance on Twitter, Instagram, and nobody answered on Facebook. But sure, look, we haven't been on Facebook in a long time, so that's no surprise. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm actually, I, it's, it's just myself, DJ, as always, and Owen, my trusty co-host, as always, uh, this week. And I have to say, right, there was an air of absolute divilment about the two of us today. Uh, Owen, I don't know about you, but as soon as quitting time hitting work, I just had that. The ghoul and jig was going before I even fucking left work, to be quite honest with you. I was a giddy little boy today, so I was. <laughs> a giddy I, goat growth. I, I, just, I, I, just, I just needed to, I needed to get out of work. I needed to go. I needed to get some cans. And boy, did we get cans. Oh, my God. Like, I'm telling you, as someone, as someone who's, a, who's about to, like, enact a mortgage, I pretty much got a mortgage worth of cans today. But God, I'm at good value. There's some value out there at the moment for the can. But this day will go down in history, you know? Battle of Hastings, <laughs> Easter Rising, <laughs> the 16th of April, 2021. The, like, the, the boys bought more cans <laughs> than an off-license. <laughs> we bought so many cans, we had to go to three off-licenses. Um, is, is off-licenses, they're the plural of off license. I feel um, like it should be off license or something. Um, off licenses, lost licenses, <laughs> off licenses, offies, offies, offies. Yeah, actually, sorry, that is the plural of off license. Is offies. And <laughs> um, yeah, oh my god, what a great day! Like so good. So out the door of work, right? Everyone knows by now. We work in the hospital in University Hospital Waterford. Out the door of University Hospital Waterford, across the road to the like the irresistible Ardkeen quality food store craft beer fridge. Boy, oh boy, is this fridge inviting. And today, Owen, it was top notch. It was a peak performance today. I tell you what, like, so a lot of businesses around have like, like really upped their game. Uh, during the pandemic in terms of like you know a lot of them it was kind of like a bit of a downtime still a lot of it a bit of a downtime for a lot of businesses i'm actually quite excited when things open back up to see if you know if there if there is changes in in some businesses but like say with like with um with arcane stores like they upgraded those fridges to have these like fully glass fronted like fridges like there's, there's not even like a bevel on the fridge for like to impede your view of the cans. It is just a wall of cans. It is amazing. Um, and the selection there today was out of this world. It was so good. Like I, t- today was definitely the biggest like selection of cans I've ever seen in the three off licenses yes. that we went to. But I was talking to I was talking to Julie today, right? Um, inside in Arkin Stores, and uh, she was saying that she was talking to a manager or a coworker of hers, and that they had um a certain beer in. I can't remember the name of it, but uh, uh, they had one beer in, and there was a like new edition of like the next of this beer like kind of coming out like you know like the next batch or but like it was called maybe i think it was called maybe the beer was called something like big brother and then the next beer was called little brother right um but the co-worker was like oh is like little worker or little brother the same as big brother and she was like no no like you know this is more of a saison versus blah blah but you know like some other kind of differentiation between it and he was just like, what? But, but, like, why are we, why are we getting in this kind of new beer? And she was like, that's what people want. 
People just want new. They want to taste different. That's what the kind of craft beer scene is about. And I was like, you're so right. Like, that's exactly what I'm kind of doing when I'm going into the fridge. I'm like, oh, oh, what's, what's, what's this now? I haven't seen this before. I'm going to take up one of these guys, you know? Like, I have to say, like, Julie is playing an absolute fucking blinder in our King Quality Food store at the moment. Like, she, she made a great point to us today where, like, obviously we're absolute devils. Like, she, she puts an incredible, incredible display of beer in the, in, in the fridges. And we turn around and we ask for two that she doesn't have in stock at the moment. But as she said, like, you know, there's so many quality beers coming out at the moment. How do you keep the fridge stocked? Um, yeah, she was like, she, she like they, they actually only have so much space. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, and that's a testament. Who do you boot to out? Breweries. Testament to Irish breweries, and it's great that we have different off licenses we can go and get different beers um, from. And and you know, do you know what though? Like, I have to say, like, what a fantastic job in in, but but it's not just like obviously, you know what? There's so many great beers out there. It's not hard to stock great beers, but that fridge is so inviting. The way it's like, you know not to get into merchandising or any of that, but just the way it like sucks you in. Yeah. And the way it, like your eye is just drawn to every single level of that fridge. Like and, get your Stark in stores if you're in Watford, lads. And do you know what you were saying as well there? You were saying, oh, there's some value today. Uh, and uh, and we'll, we'll go on about the, the value, but but actually just in general value, right? We've been, we've named an episode five for 16. There was a lot of sections of that fridge day where it was three euro cans, mm. like five for 15. Five Do you know what I mean? Here, game, like, honest to God, they've, they've delivered on value. And what I love about, what what I really love about Arkin Quality Food Stores is, like, they do rotate breweries. You get different breweries in, in, in and out. But they're very loyal to what I think is probably the best brewery in the country at the moment, um, Kinnegar. So, so like they, they, they are very much like Kinnegar are on the ball. They stock Kinnegar heavily and it's a very popular beer in the Southeast. Yeah. But you can't get it on tap, you know, which, which, which like hopefully will change in the future. But the other thing as well is they're very loyal to local beers. Crafty Hopster, Dungarvan Brewing Company and Metal Man Metal are Man, always yeah. in that beer yeah. fridge. And I was greeted today with a legacy cider, Clint, um, which was which was which was brilliant because it's a, a like it's coming into cider season as well. You know the, the the sun is out, people are getting a lip for cider as well. So I just thought like what a start to our um our trifecta of offies uh, that we went to today. And actually, not just the trifecta of offies. A very quick shout out to number twenty one, an off license we went to last week for the first time ever. Well, yeah, I, I was my first time ever in there anyway, and 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 that had some lovely surprises in there as well. Yeah, yeah, um, and again, like just, 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 I think they're so well displayed now. Like just those kind of like big open fridges, just like, um, just completely inviting and lined up quite nicely. Like, um, uh, <laughs> and that contrasts uh, to <laughs> the off license that we also went to, which was Worldwide Wines, where it is like it's actually the randomness of that off license just makes it magical. Like. Do you know like, what? I, I, I was thinking about this today. Do you know Jumanji, right? <laughs> yeah. But not, but not like Robin Williams, the original Jumanji. Do you know the Jumanji with the rock and the newer Jumanjis? There's yeah, two. with Jack Black, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jack Black, The Rock, Kevin Hart, and uh, I can't think of the actress's name. Um, I mean, apologies to the actress if she's listening. <laughs> <laughs> but it's kind of like that, you know. You like It's like you're just fucked in the jungle. And you're just like made up when you come out with a gem. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it, you know what? Because because like as you we, we like you know what, Arkeen stores number twenty one, Grady's Yard, quality fridges, quality layout, like very easy to navigate. The beauty of worldwide wines is it is literally the jungle. You go in and you're met with a barricade of wine, a barricade of whiskey. You have circumnavigators way around. The the um the, the the cocktail glasses section that they have at the front there, and then you come across this um wall of 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 independent craft beer before you before you even come to the plinth. Yeah. And behind the plinth, then there is this continental wall of mystery. 
yeah yeah that just kind of seems to constantly change and then you know has these it has stuff it has like these bottles there that you'd probably find in kind of like L- any uh belgian bar but then it also has these like 10 euro barrel aged like beauties as well from like to all or, or whoever like it's 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 just it's just amazing but actually one thing that happened in there that i thought was very funny was that you know we were looking along we saw oh oh look at this they they're they they stock um they uh, they have a can here from um western herd it's like oh god we have we haven't seen that at all down here for ages like you know <laughs> but because of the layout we were like oh look this this one here oh oh actually there's there's another one uh, and there's another one there on the top shelf as well and then like it ended up being that they had like six cans from the range like all in the one like just all scattered across about uh, six different shelves but like the thing is like for people that don't understand the plinth is basically this like um like this long tape. it's an island like yeah, this of, long island unit that has loads of beer on top of it but under the plint is this open shelving and all the western herd were on different layers of the shelving but it was all like the one western herd range that was scattered amongst the different cans from the different breweries like there was there was um like limited edition lock gills in there limited edition yellow bellies it was just this big massive wildfire it was like this native woodland of independent beer and we were just trying to find our way through it and mosey our way through it and, and like you could genuinely come up with anton out of it yeah oh totally yeah uh, um, um, but, 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 but we found plenty of cans to buy uh, including the beer that we're going to talk about tonight for the prisoner Powell. but before that we went on to the third brewery of the day or the third offer of the day yeah we tipped into um grady's yard um and oh god just every time you step in there i'm just like just open the pubs please please like, just open the pubs. Like, so everyone knows everyone who listens to this podcast for a long time will know the affinity the affection we hold for the the, the barmen in the regular bars that we attend in waterford tom ryan phil Grimes, we, we like we're like we have so much love for the man me hall and grady's yard who's who's been on the podcast briefly on on occasion and yep. maybe on it again um do you know we talk about these the, these figures on the podcast, uh, or we have done pre-pandemic, say. So we come, we walk in the door. There's no one behind the bar, and Grady's Yard. When you walk in the door, the bar greets you with this wall of taps. But in front of that, now they have the low fridges, and to the right hand side, there's the high fridges. So we turn immediately right to the high fridges, and we're looking in the fridges, and all we hear is roaring across the bar this beautiful Dundalk accent. Of me. Oh, the boys! <laughs> oh, so, the boys! And like neither of us turned, we just like still looking in the fridge, gave a roll back, like, well, how was me hall? <laughs> <laughs> just this brilliant interaction that, like, you know, it just made me long for the for 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 the proper pub back even more. Um, and what a selection! Like beers from the UK, beers from Denmark, beers from Ireland, beers from the US, beers from Canada, beers yeah. from. Belgium everywhere oh like for the for a place that's a pub that's got six fridges in three big three small the variety and even the inter interbrewery variety in the fridges is is just astounding yeah I and um like they definitely have like the best US Canadian select like the amount of different like breweries from all over the US and stuff that they have it's like absolutely amazing and like maybe it is a little bit to their detriment as well like the selection that's there because um i suppose they're probably paying a little bit of a premium to get those cans in and like you know it's it's such a it you know it's such um I don't, I don't know what to say. I suppose like I'm not a, a, like a, a, like you'd want to be so into your craft beer in order to have that kind of discoverability about things, you know, and to go in search of these beers, these American beers as well, because you can get so um, like 
I suppose it, it's the marketing appeal of the Irish beers where there's that familiarity about them, whereby, you know, you'll see your Elevation Pale Ale, you'll see your um, Pirates Bay, you know, from from Offie to Offie um, and, and like from even from like Lidl and Tesco and all those, you'll see the kind of same ones kind of creep across. But it, it then like when you look and you see uh, these American ones that are kind of actually the artwork is even kind of like totally out there in comparison like a lot of time it's kind of like this graffiti or like kind of really weird looking like beer cans and stuff that uh, like I suppose it's, it like it doesn't even draw you to it you know um, as the Irish ones do just because I suppose of that kind of like familiarity with them and um, but- but even there, like today, I picked up two cans and, and I can't think of the name of them now and I'm not going to drink them tonight, but they're in the fridge. I can't think of them. But I said it to you and Michal inside, we had a good laugh about it. Like I literally was like, I'm only buying these cans because it looked like the kind of thing that Vince Vaughn would drink in the background of the scene. In the, in the, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, the, just, what's it called? Dale? Dale? I don't know. It's, a, it's, a, it's just a classic American pale ale, but I can't think of the brewery now. But do you know what? I'll drink them on a podcast in a couple of weeks' time. Uh, yeah. The, uh, but like we had left hand uh, brewing, we bought their pilsner in there, um, a bus, I bought a Berlin uh, unfiltered lager in there. Uh, they have stuff from Founders, they have stuff from um, Sierra Nevada, they have stuff from loads of American breweries. They have stuff from Toola. Um, yeah. Ah, it's just, oh, just loads, like just loads. Just, like I wouldn't even know. I wouldn't even know them. They're like they're there's just so such a wide variety like that they. They don't need, like a lot of them just don't even look or sound familiar at all. Like they're just and for a makeshift offy, like they have barrel aged stuff, they have New England pale ales, they have the double dry hot pale ales, they have sours, they have gosses, they have lagers, they have pilsners, they have, like stouts, everything you can think of. Yeah, they have yeah, yeah. Such a broad selection. Uh, so that was that was top top notch. Um, and and, and we, we bought all around us today. We really, yeah, did. yeah, and spread the love. We did. And actually, we bought quite a few Pilsners, uh, Hellas beers for, for this Pilsner Powell that we're, we're, going, we're, do, we're in the middle of. Um, yep. so we're well stocked for the next for the next few podcasts. Uh, we might actually have to double up next week <laughs> um, to, get, to get through them. And we actually spoke today as well about adding like a Kolsch in as well. Just different styles of lager and different styles of, um, of that type of brewing. Because at the end of the day, as we said, like, you know, this is the Pilsner Prowl. Uh, we are trying to replace Puck Pilsner in our lives, but that doesn't necessarily mean it has to be a Pilsner. Um, as as we went through when we had the the Keller beer last week, but this week on we've gone for um we've gone for what what is a limited edition beer. So if it if it comes out on top, I think we'll have to like just harass Hope, uh, brewing yeah. into, in, into brewing it regularly. Hundred percent, yeah. Um, um, you know what? I'll actually, I, 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 so basically I bought three cans of this today and I had two of them before we started recording and I've had the third one now since we've been starting. So I actually will let you, cause you, you've just had your first one now. So yeah. I'll let you introduce it and give your spiel on it before I, I give my opinion. Cause I, I'm, we, we've intentionally not spoken about it to each other yet. And I'm, I'm absolutely dying to know what you think about this beer. Uh, yeah. So, um, uh, so I, I th- you probably heard me when I was initially pouring a DJ. I was just like, Jesus, there's some fizz on her. So like, the, the washing machine went mad there for a minute. Like it was really to the foreground. Oh, sorry there. So actually, like before I give my spiel on it, like I'd act- I'm actually really, really interested on in into finding out what you think about this beer. Yeah. Um, yeah, as you probably heard, like heard earlier on when I was talking to you, um, like when I poured her out there, like I was like, Jesus, some fizz on this, you know? <laughs> like I was like a, a child with a fucking bottle of cadet or something. Like, Jesus, there's some fizz on this. And there is though, there's like, it, it creates some like lovely head and the bubbles would be flowing through it, you know? Um uh, yeah, it's that it's that real kind of like summary look about it, right? And you go, oh, this is going to be, you know, this is going to be you know, kind of like generic-y taste and um, 
lager lagery kind of beer you know but like when you taste it there's this kind of like i don't know lovely kind of nearly toffee taste off it mm. and it's uh, like i think it's absolutely smashing like i think this is this is a quality beer like it's it's it, it's so i don't know so like it's it's so deep and rich for a pilsner because oftentimes you kind of think of them as being um like crisp and uh and like fresh and like you know uh, and uh, i suppose that, that kind of like fizzy carbonated kind of taste but this kind of has nearly a, a red ailey kind of like bit to it do you know um i think it's f- fabulous but look only the only the scale will tell you know what I mean? <laughs> Oh, look, like, it's funny because sometimes you drink these beers and you'll be like, oh, they're brilliant. And then you go to do the score and you're like, actually, but I'm really, int- I'm really looking forward to scoring this because do you know what? I, I'm not going to lie. Like, I, I was fucking, I was really blown away by this beer. Um, when I poured it straight away, I was like, that looks really, really interesting because it's not too clear. It has a depth of color That's to what, it. Yeah. But it yeah. gives a good head and there's loads, there's loads of carbonation going on. You know, there, there's a good bit of life in it. Um, and actually, I think the makeup of the beer, the beer is what makes it because um, uh, it's, it's, it's a traditional Pilsner. Um, so so the, tradi- the, the traditional Pilsners originated in the Czech Republic but they've got the Bohemian Pilsner malt um, and, and, and they use Bavarian bittering hops. But they also use that the, the Czech hop Saz um, for this. So it's, it's, it's actually like, it's almost like they've taken the traditional Czech Pilsner and they've taken the Bohemian twist, the Bavarian twist, and they've just fused them into this fucking magic beer. I, I'm a big, big fan of this. Like, um, I think it has, you're dead right. It's basically like, it's almost, it has notes of like the familiar lagers and pilsners that you drink. It's almost yeah. like, oh, this is familiar, but it's just elevated to a different fucking level. Like a level that you don't, you're you never, ever going to get from a macro beer. Like imagine, like imagine having this and a Carlsberg, like sip for sip. Imagine ah. going, imagine that, like the difference, like the, you know, like, oh. I couldn't. I, I couldn't. couldn't. I wouldn't do it. You really couldn't. I like, wouldn't do it to me, palate. I just think, like, you know what, right? For a pilsner, it's got it's it, it's it's bitter, right? It is bitter, and you want that bitterness. It's got that lovely maltiness, and it's got that just fucking essence of of it's got that essence of this is a product of the fucking earth. Do you know what I mean? Like this is a this is this is something natural to drink. There's no fucking around here. It's just a fucking top quality beer. Hey, kick off the score. Come on, kick, have you the kick. spreadsheet open? I want I want to see how this shapes up against the rest of them. Okay, so we're looking for the rule and jig straight away. How does it do in terms of like... like Listen. Say today, actually, like today is probably our best hit, test day that we could possibly have because... Coming out of work today, my fucking shoulders were going. Hey, we were going ninety, you know. We we were both on a five for sixteen before we left work today. So, may, but you know what? I'm going to say it anyway. The Gulen Jig is the five for sixteen. It is. It is totally the five for sixteen. But this beer is the five for sixteen. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Like, there's no two ways about it. In fact, we gave was it it was, it was to Ola that we gave five for sixteen to as well, was it? Uh, no, uh, it was the Eucarious Pills. Eucarious. I have a lot of empty Eucarious bottles next to me here, and I'm looking. I'm looking at Eucarious. I'm looking at the can of of this whole Bohemian Pilsner, and I can't believe I'm saying this because I fell in love with Eucarious, but I'm more drawn to the hope. I actually, honest to God, yeah, hope is five for sixteen as well. Yep. Might might even be five for twenty. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> My pe- my money spend my spend that my spend that little bit more to you know we get made the money or <laughs> no, five and um, sixteen is the top score. We'll see how she shapes up against the rest. Um. So uh, the next one then is the quivering quencher, right? So on the Richter scale, uh, be, uh I, I can't remember what you what you always say. Was well, it nine or seven? What's uh, it? Nine, is it is it nine? Is six? 
is 30 trillion tons of dynamite. I think yeah. that's what they say anyway. Yeah. Um, so this is the so basically if your lip was if the quiver of your lip was registering on the Richter scale, what level would this quench it? I, I tell you, I'm only after like opening it like not too long ago, and I keep reaching for it. Yeah. I keep reaching for it and like like it, it, I, it would quench anything now. Now, on the other hand, Look on the other hand, it doesn't have that kind of crispness, you know, that kind of, to it. But it does have a lot of it does have a lot of fizz. You know what I mean? But what I'm saying is, I think that crispness is another score. I think I think it it deals with the quiver very well. It does, yeah. I think it's. I think it's high on the quiver, low on the gas. Yeah, I think you're right as well. So I, I think on the quiver. So what, what's the highest score so far? The highest is Eucarius Pills as well uh, with a 5.9. Uh, after that then is Keller Beer with a 5.5. 6.2. 6.2. I, I would like, yeah, like, I, like it is above the Eucarius Pills, I do think. I think um, I think quiver factor is high up there, and I think right. I think she'll score low on the on the gas. Yeah, but I think I think this 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 quenches any quiver really. Bar the, the, the biggest of quivers. So leading on to then the post point gasp. So, um, so this, yeah, I suppose it is the kind of malty, the maltiness that kind of toffee flavor that I was kind of talking about there, where it probably lets it down for that because you're kind of so you know you're kind of soothing out of it yeah and i'm not even sure is it a letdown i think it's no. like a like that gasp is like that <sighs> yeah. it's almost like it sates you with one sup and the, the gasp whereas this doesn't quite say you but it does like want you to come back for more so so what's the score for this? It's, it's, the, it's the that's bass, isn't it? That's bass, yeah. I'd probably just give it that's. I I will I I was I wasn't even going to say that, but <laughs> I wasn't even going to say that. And um, I was going to say that, and you're saying that's. So we yeah. just give it a that. That, yeah. Yeah, because because I don't I I think that's its that's its weakness in this scoring tool, which which actually I think while it being a weakness in the scoring tool still actually weights it heavily in favor of some of the other scores um so right um the next one um is uh the jib of her right um but you know what i i have kind of gotten sick of this one uh i think it, it's it's stupid <laughs> it's only scored out of five um so we have I, to do it though and, and i know because because i will say this right i know what you're saying but the one thing I, I was basically your issue with this is we haven't come up with an innovative enough score. <laughs> uh, yeah, I even but even just it just it's I think it's it's a bit too all encompassing. Like it just it nearly is like you're kind of like I don't know. Do you know like just the jib of her? It's a bit it's a bit too vague. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but is is there not a lot of of vagueness about beer to begin with? Yeah. But I'm not, I'm not going to lie, right? And I'm supp- like, I'm almost pushing against you on this because I had my first can sitting down watching the telly with Neve and I poured it. And the first thing I did was say, that looks spectacular. That, now, that is, that's, that, that is, that's, I suppose that's true for this one. That is true for this I one. Mean, I mean, it's, it's, fail, it's failing a lot of, in, in a lot of other ones. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I looked at this when I poured it and thought, like, that's what a pilsner should look like. That that I that looks like something I want to fucking gulp down. Right. Okay. 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 Because, we'll, because we'll, it, it we'll, was gold, but it had that fucking depth of color, that carbonation, that head. It it ticked all the boxes. Whatever the full score is, it gets it five jibs. Five five jibs. Okay. Okay. Um. But we can delete the, delete the column next week if you want. <laughs> no, no. Actually, where I was where I was trying to lead to that, it was that I had um, suggested an alternative category. Oh, for it. Okay. Um, 
<laughs> and it is a DJ Walsh um, <laughs> specific one. Go on. <laughs> and it is the level of arthritic relief. <laughs> Could we not just add that in? Like, <laughs> go on, explain it further to me. So, so like, you wake. So, I, it, this comes from uh, you during the week. You're like, oh Jesus, my hands, my knees are absolutely killing me. Like, absolutely killing me. I'm, I like, <laughs> I, I'm gonna keel over here. Like, and then you were like. Oh God, I'd love a pint now just to settle me, you know? <laughs> so I want to know like which of these is going to be a cure-all for you. Now I haven't figured out the scale as to like, you know, do we do it in terms of kind of like the Richter scale as to like what uh, what the degree of suffering this would uh, relieve or do we do it from like, like, how, uh, how many fingers can I straighten? Oh, no, that's a good one. That's a good one. So if you have 10 clawed fingers, how, many, fingers, score. how many fingers can you now straighten? <laughs> I love how we're taking my like chronic illness and just turning it into a scoring tool for how good a beer is. Yeah, I, I'm glad we didn't think of that in the first day. Yeah, we might just have to do a Patreon only episode where we go through each beer at the end and uh, yeah, arthritis yeah. relief scale. Yeah, yeah. Actually, we should get someone on from like Arthritis Ireland. <laughs> to, yeah, to score them. Um, no, this would score high in that too. Yeah. What's, yeah. what's next on the Pilsner or Brown? Uh, so oh, sorry, the last category is it? Oh, are we on the last one? Yeah, the last category then is puckability. Man, I'm slightly heartbroken. And I'd, I'd agree with your heartbreak as well. Um, this is a limited edition. Yeah. I, honest to God, like, part of me feels like writing a strongly worded letter to hope to at least have it seasonal for the summer every summer um look what are we looking for in pokeability it is simply how alike it is to the one and only puck pilsner i don't i would slightly disagree i don't think it's how alike it is to puck pilsner I think is it is what is the capacity for this beer to be your go-to above all other beers? What is the capacity for this beer to encapsulate that je suis fini à travail, mais je je veux dire un beer like oh um, wait wait j'ai un tour Eiffel dans mes pantalons. Yeah, exactly. How does this beer measure up? Like if you were I am like, how would this beer like draw your eyes away from everything else if you were in the Vion Post? You know, how, what is the, 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 like, what is the Kelke shows? Yeah, yeah. Je ne sais pas, je ne comprends pas. Il n'y a pas un point de nous ici. Like, how do we, like, just that unquantified, how do we quantify the unquantifiable? Yeah. And for me, right, Eucarious Pill scored 80,001, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, correct, yeah. I would give this 86,337. See... <sighs> I don't know, right? Because Eucarious Pills had that, like when, so when I tasted Eucarious Pills, right? And, and had it, I was like, this is, this is giving me that bit of feeling that 
I had when I had Puck Pilsner. You know, it had it had that it had that just same body feel to it. You know, whereas this it doesn't have the same, but it's a different beer to it. There's more mo- like it's just it's it's a, it's just different to it, and like I don't think I can scale it on puckability at all really i don't know it's so like it's just a it's a different pilsner altogether to puck so, pilsner i wonder like are we thinking about the puckability in different in a different sense are you thinking about it from a how close is this to puck pilsner sense and am i thinking about it from symbolically how close could it be to puck pilsner without actually like differentiating the taste and the feel and all that kind of stuff uh, maybe but yeah but I, I think it was just maybe like how how like how even just how close it was to that feeling i had when i had puck pilsner do you know i just it was just a different feeling than this do you know what I mean? And I actually got a little bit of that back when I had Eucarious pills. I was so, just like, I was just like, oh, gee, like Jesus, this is this is it again. This is and and yeah. and, and maybe you know, obviously it was the kind of similar tasting and stuff like that. But I was just like, fuck, there's something here now. Whereas this, I don't get that at all. But I'm really enjoying this. That's funny because I do get that from this, right? But I also got it from Eucarious pills. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think what we need to do is you need to give it a score and we need to meet in the middle. I'd give it 54,362. It was like 86 and you were 54. Yeah. So we're 32 apart, 16. That's it. 70,000. 70,000. 70,000 even. 70,000. I'm I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I do think, I do think uh, Eucarious Pills probably just Probably like well for me, I, I know you're you're thinking otherwise, but I think Eucarious Pills probably just does have that little bit of an edge, like you know, but but I think this is the beauty of the scoring tool that we, we have quite similar palettes. Yeah. But like we're not they're not unique. No, 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 no. And I think we can both agree that Eucarious Pills and Hope's Bohemian Pilsner are two absolutely phenomenal beers. 100%, 100%. Um, and I wouldn't hesitate reaching for either. And with that said, I think we might take a little bit of an ad break. We do. We need to because I've just finished my can and I need to get another one. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. Um, so, yeah, uh, we're going to go into an ad break now. You'll be uh, told to buy something by the folks at Acast. And um, please enjoy the following... 30 seconds or so. Well, we're back in the room. The glasses are full, the bladders are empty. And I actually really fucking enjoyed that Pilsner Prowl. I think, you know what? It's good that we didn't agree on the last topic because we, we do have very similar tastes. We have very similar opinions on beer, but sometimes we differ. Sometimes, sometimes, and, and that's a good thing. Uh, it's a good thing for the podcast, good thing for listeners. And uh, I actually am, am, am very, very intrigued at the at your your thoughts on that beer one. I think it was really, really good to, to have that. And I think as we go on with this, it's going to be fascinating. And I wonder, will anything ever score 100,000 on the, on the puckability or more even? You, know, you never know. But we, we, have a few, we have a few beers that we're eyeing up to get in, that we really want to get in, that are out there at the moment. They're going to make reviews online. And we actually have... After today, now a fridge full of of filter lagers, Hellas lagers, uh, pilsners, and we're looking at a few cultures as well. So there, there's some serious beers to come up in the pilsner problem in the next uh, couple of weeks. I think what our problem is going to be is that, like, wh- when do we draw the line? When do we say this this prowl is finished? You know, because like just with the release schedule of things, like you know that. I suppose maybe like uh, maybe stout season might kind of cut cut it off, but like I don't know if I want to wait that long to for us to be to yeah. to clear a winner, you know. I think if I find something that I, I think I think that Bohemian Pilsner from Hope and Eucarious Pills are are not far off it. Yeah, 
and as well, it, it'll depend when the pub is open too. Yeah. So like, I think if we find something between now and the pub's opening that is like genuinely beating you curious pills and, and the Bohemian from Hope out, out the gate, I think I think then it stops because you're like, you know, they are, they, those two beers are, are near enough. Perfect. Phenomenal, yeah. Um, and I think I think if we find that, that's the line. I also think too, though, if the pub's open, it's like, fuck the prowl on the cans, like get back on the pints. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what, that's my one, like. <laughs> fuck the podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but speaking of the podcast, uh, we, we, we were like, we were talking all, we were talking during the week about what topic we would speak about and a few things came up and we just didn't settle them on. And we thought, you know what, fuck it. It's been a while since we've gone to the listeners and say, what do you want us to talk about? Um, so that's exactly what we did. Uh, purely out of our own laziness. Uh, we put out there on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. Nobody got back on Facebook. Actually, I better check the Facebook just to see if anyone did. But we put up on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. Just if you have any questions, um, let us know. Give us a shout. Tell us. Uh, what you want us to talk about, any questions you want answered, any topics you want covered, and we'll try and uh, basically cover them uh, today. And we got some replies. We got some. We 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 got some replies on. Um, actually, the only in, interaction we had on Facebook was nobody. We didn't get a reply to questions or topics, but our good old friend Owen Leanne Cody liked our post. Oh, good honor. Good woman, Leanne. Big fan of the show. Yeah, big fan of the show. Big big fan of the show. Uh, Leanne, a good friend of ours, and uh, shout out to Leanne. So, uh, Owen, do you want to go with the Instagram, and I'll go with the Twitter? We'll we'll kick it off. You go first there. Uh, yeah. So uh, we got a few responses back on Instagram. Uh, I'll just pick some of our uh, best ones here, but uh, I I just love how I've, I I just a big bunch of messers our our listeners are like they just they, like we don't take ourselves seriously and they don't take us seriously and they don't take themselves seriously so um we've one from tommy who was on the show last week uh and tommy says uh will he be observing a minute silence for prince philip <laughs> right we're recording this the night before his funeral and uh, yes we'll address this quite quickly no offense to any of our British listeners who are would observe a minute silence for Prince Philip, but we won't be uh, for obvious reasons. Uh, on your way, Philly, Slanja, long the fall. Fair play. Uh, um, He's only he was only a few months away from getting a letter from the Queen. Uh, so we also had um, a question here from Irish beer snob. And Hello, he says, "Hello, Jan. What is the worst drink you've ever drank?" Well, it was actually, "What is the worst drink you've ever drank?" Um, mm. Mine was Lizard Sake. So, obviously, if Wayne has said, "What is the worst drink you've ever drank?" Wayne yeah. is after a few drinks. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And and as well for anyone. Re- genuinely check out the Irish Beer Snob podcast lately. They've had some brilliant episodes of some great brewers. Uh, the worst beer... We Actually, do you remember we episode five of the Snowcast? If we go way back to the very, very start, uh, when Grady's Yard wasn't even open yet. Yep. And we did an interview with Danny from Yellow Belly and Kevin was the manager of Grady's Yard at the time. Two absolutely phenomenal lads. And we asked them this. We Actually, we asked, like, what's the worst beer you've ever drank? But I think this is like that was what's your what's the worst beer you've got? So it could be a good beer, but you've had a bad experience. I think what Wayne is asking is what is genuinely the worst drink? Yeah. You've ever drank. It's a tough one. Mine's probably like some sort of like shot, I'd say, you know. Um mm. because in uh college world, uh you you know you asked for uh like the, the the genuine question that you would have asked on a night out was what is your cheapest strongest drink and it would have been like goldschlager or it would have been um chartreuse i was going to say do you remember chartreuse 
Yeah, and oh, I think chartreuse could be an answer there, you know. Um, I loved chartreuse in college, but purely for the fact that, like, it was it meant to, it, it instantaneously made the night a write off. Yeah, it was more of an experience than an actual uh, drinking experience, you know, a, a drinking pleasure, you know. It was like uh, a, legal, a legal hallucinogenic. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'll probably go. I'll probably go along that line. So yeah, the, the other story I told from the, that uh, the podcast was I had uh, the, the worst pint of Guinness that like it literally tasted like uh, I was drinking bleach. Um, in a nightclub in Cork that had just kind of reopened or something. So I'd say they had the same keg from the two years or that it was closed, you know, that was still kegged up. I was going to say, basically, I was just going to answer Rock Shore. Yeah. Yeah. The worst drink anyone's ever had. Stop drinking Rock Shore, people. Like, if, it, if, if any beer has to be advertised that much, it's shite. Yeah. Stop drinking it. Yeah, uh, yeah, I think we covered that before uh, previously. Just like how heavily that was like promoted yeah. and put on banners and so forth around Dublin at the oh, time. Like, I ate the air off Tom and the Cove about it one day. I was like, "Why, you, why, you? like, I don't care what this cunt they're giving you. The waste of a tap. I you uh, fucking me running straight from the urinal." <laughs> <laughs> um, Matt Preston um has asked us. Wait, you, Matt. Uh, he said, this has probably been done before, but do you have any guilty pleasure drinks? Oh, do I? Oh, do I? Uh, Muldoon's is the guilty pleasure. Like, it, well, it's, actually, that's oh, a great shout, yeah. It's the epitome of a guilty pleasure. Like, it's a whiskey liqueur, hazelnutty, like Christmassy almost, which is like, like that, that's the, the quintessential guilty pleasure is... Muldoon's whiskey liqueur, I think. Yeah, and like actually, it, like it, it, trying not to uh, offend uh, our female listeners, but this has actually been uh, like this was actually produced in order to target the whiskey market to women. Mm-hmm. It was it like it, that's that was the kind of marketing appeal behind yeah. it. But they told, us, they told us that themselves. Yeah, they told uh, yeah, but but like you know. Color me pink, <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? Like it, it, it is tasty, and um, I've, I've, I've actually, we, like, we've never had any sh- shame, and why should you have any shame about enjoying yeah. such a delicious, delicious drink? Um, but, but as well, like, I, there's this misconception that certain drinks are f- feminine. Well, it's the marketing behind them, isn't it? Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. like and West Coast Cooler, you know, you're going, oh, well, that's that's when, you know, do you know what I mean? Like, but like, if you enjoyed West Coast Cooler, so why not enjoy it? And fuck that shit. But the other thing I will say is the, pl- the place that we tend to drink Mulder's Whiskey Liqueur is Davy Max Bar in Waterford. Yeah. The other thing that I would often get a drink of in there, thanks to our good friend, Sonia Norwan, a veteran of the Snowcast mm-hmm. from back in the day, I, I think a guilty pleasure is a top quality if you can get a really good old fashioned. Yeah, yeah. That's a guilty pleasure of a drink as well. Uh, well, like I'm a big fan of just cocktails in general. So like, th- like I, I, don't get you started on espresso martinis. You can't call them a guilty pleasure because you drink them so often. Exactly. Yeah. But like I, like even like daiquiris and stuff or or or, or cosmos or whatever. Like like a really good one. Like from from an experienced bartender, it's just absolutely phenomenal. Like you know, well, sure. The last time we were abroad was my stag in Portugal, and sure we were having mojitos with, with our fry up breakfast. <laughs> fry up, yeah. So, so yeah. Um, great question. So, yeah. So great question. Um, and uh, and uh, the last one I've picked out here from our Instagram was from uh, Connor Dalton, uh, the the uh, writer um, the and producer and. The, the creator of the, the Snowcast uh, team tune. And he said, how did you gobshites get on the television? <laughs> well, that's fairly fucking simple, Connor. Didn't you turn the television on? <laughs> uh, love it. Thanks, lads. Yeah, thanks, Connor. Look forward to seeing you when you come back to Ireland for another trip at some stage sooner rather than later. Uh, right on. You picked out your favourites from Instagram. I, I'm going to go on Twitter now and have a look at a few of the questions. Uh, I want to start. I'm going to start off with this one um, from Gavin McCarthy. 
uh, we said well, basically the way I phrased it was uh, questions, topics, and Gavin brings up the return of Point Watch. Yeah, let's let's do it. Let's do it. It's look, been it, a while. Point, like Point Watch is over in the UK. Yeah, yeah. So I think there's basically like what Gavin's alluding to now is like people are being vaccinated. Like we we were very fortunate enough to be vaccinated fairly early on because of our day jobs. Uh, and yeah, uh, look. I think it's as well as because there, like uh, when we uh, started Point Watch, uh, Point Watch uh, initially, there was that kind of sniff of um, of uh, a, a reopening plan and mm. um, that was, and we were trying to kind of guess it. And that yeah. was kind of the basis of it. And there is that kind of sniff of, again of like, you know, in, uh, you know, a week or two, there's going to be an announcement of, you know, what uh, May, June and July are going to look like, you know, so. So I will say this much, right? I really hope the fuck that this nonsense about a substantial meal and. <laughs> Wet pubs and dry pubs. Oh, and like bin that. Just bin, bin that, yeah. Right. Like, if like have it outdoors. Like the ventilation is the important thing. Like have it outdoors if you want f- for the summer, fine. But by God, like what difference does it make if I have six pints with a bowl of chicken wings or five six pints with a yeah fucking with no near a bowl in front of me um like let's bring it back to the, the that uh, two week period that we had of uh the wet pubs reopening and when we went into philly grimes and we were out the back and there was no no harm whatsoever yeah but as well as me also said to us today they need time. They need the brewers need time to brew and keg it. Yeah. The 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 bars need time to clean the pipes. Like, do not announce it overnight. Good yeah. God, give them time to be ready. Uh, the one thing I will say, on right, in terms of point watch, I think it's it's actually point point watch is a great way of looking at it. They have open pubs in the UK now with 35, 40 million doses of vaccine given, uh, which is a roughly. F- 50 to 55 percent of the British population if they're all first doses um I think equivalently we've 20 percent of the Irish population with first doses now but we're expecting a big delivery of Pfizer vaccine next couple of weeks before the end of April so if all that comes to fruition and there isn't a substantial rise and outbreak in the UK my prediction is given all those variables June back all the weekend uh, but I would, actually, I would say the the after the June, they're not going to open it on a bank holiday weekend. I think because yeah, it, but I would say the week after June bank holiday weekend. I was gonna, say, I I was gonna say that yeah. Uh, but yeah, to to make it interesting, I'll say uh, your birthday, twenty first of June, summer solstice. Hope 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 this up the solstice. Up the solstice on the sauce, uh, right. but yeah, thanks for that. That uh, like that's that's been that was a good and like I always like I, I always felt good about the point watch. Like it was such an exciting thing, yeah. um, and th- the reason we gave it up was just because after the we were heartbroken. closure, we were like, oh, for fuck's sake. And and even like that conversation we have with Tom Ryan the last day that we were there, yeah, where he was just crestfallen and. And then we did a last call. We spoke to Bar, and, and I like I'd love to re- I'd love to revisit the last call and talk to those um, the, the, the owners and, and and operators and family of bartenders. Um, actually, if, if if you're interested in something like that, because it takes a lot of time, a lot of effort, uh, send us an email. If there's a demand for for like a revisiting of the last call to see where bars are, let us know and we look into it. Um, it took an awful lot of time and effort and I'd, I'd love to do it again but it, it would take an effort so I'd love to know if there's a demand there first I'm I'm going to actually I'm scrolling through the Twitter now and there's there's some I want to come back to because I feel like there's going to be an in-depth conversation so I want to get some of the ones that might be quick enough conversations yeah. about um at the moment so Taft and Clax has been in touch uh, German or Czech Pilsners which rules or what's your favourite European pills uh, which is a good question, Tafton. Tafton. Um, I find personally, 
I I don't really mind either way. And I actually think we, we had an example on the Pilsner Prowl this week on Hope Pilsner, which used Bavaria Malt and Czech hops. So I don't think you have to differentiate between the two. I think a good beer is a good beer. Um, in terms of just overarching styles, like Pilsner is originally a Czech style. Um, so yeah, there's some great Czech Pilsners out there. Actually, I have a couple of Czech Pilsners there that I got as a gift last year that I haven't touched in, tucked into yet in the fridge. But um, I'm favourite European pills. I think I think Eucarious in terms of European, if we're not looking at our Irish at the moment, uh, is is up there. Um, uh, probably probably a lot of recency bias in this. I don't know one if you've anything to add to that. No, I just, uh, think one of the ones that uh, come, like that you see quite often and that I've probably drank in the Czech Republic, I suppose uh, the one the one time I was there, I suppose, but. Um, then I think in other kind of um, European countries as well, it would be Pilsner uh, or Quell, is it? U R Q. I I pronounce it Urquell anyway. It might, might not be that. I know the one you're talking about. It's it's very popular in Liverpool, actually. Is Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, like, I, I think, like, as a, I suppose, as a, a, a macro... Um, uh eastern european uh company like i like i always love that like for for, for dipping in, in and out of like so um yeah that like that uh, again i probably we probably the two of us we, ne- we never um we never say we're we're uh, massive beer connoisseurs or uh have a huge beer knowledge anyway so mm-hmm. um but we we know what we like and those are a few that we do like uh uh, really interesting one here, Owen, from uh, Christopher Love. Um, Christopher's written in, Falling into the hard seltzer camp recently. Reminds me of my days working the pub when the old boys would call all the American beers fizzy pish. That would have blown their minds. Have either of you dabbled yet? I'm a recent blown, so disregard if you desire. First of all, Christopher, we'd never disregard any listener. Uh, so you're, we're, we're delighted to have you on board. Welcome aboard the Snowcast train. Thanks a million for getting in touch. Hard seltzers. I have to admit, Owen, I haven't really tried any yet, but they're very fucking popular at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Like you hear White Claw like a huge amount uh, across like different kind of media platforms and stuff. Um, but again, similar to you, I have not dabbled in that area now. <laughs> Having said that, I'd ha- I have, <laughs> I did buy three, four locos today. <laughs> oh man! So, oh, uh, so yeah, for anyone who's uh, not familiar with four loco, it's it's uh, like a vodka and fucking, it's like vodka and monster uh, mixed into one, like into one. It's like a, a hard um, energy drink, really, isn't it? Like it's um, basically bull testosterone and vodka combined. So it's the best of of like the woodlands and the best of Russia. And like, I, the one thing I would say, right, you suggested today we do a four local episode. And I was like, yeah, hundred percent. I'm up for that. But that's Patreon only. I'm sorry, lads. But if you like, who knows what would come out of our mouths if- Yeah. If, so yeah, patreon.com forward slash snowcast if you want to. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we will release it to the lowest tier, but yeah, you'll have to join to, you'll have to join us to, in order to hear that episode. I think Christopher makes a very interesting point in there, in terms of like that the owl boys call the American beers fizzy pish. Like, you know, this, this Smithix and Guinness drinkers looking at fucking uh, Carlsberg or not Carl, Budweiser et al., you know, and and the carbonation in them and, and snuffing their nose. So can you I can I can see where, where, where Chris is coming from in terms of the um but but again leading back even going back to the uh question about guilty pleasures like if you like it yeah fuck it, fuck it like who gives a shit like <laughs> yeah but I think as well like I wonder is I, I, I'm I'll be it'll be really interesting to see if hard seltzers become a home drink phenomenon that doesn't translate to the public. Like, have you ever seen anyone order book fast in the pub? Mm. You know, yeah, I, but yeah, but is it a 
is it, it is it more of a west coast coolery kind of yeah, thing where possibly. where you know it's a, a mix you know mix of both like you know possibly that's very good uh declan flynn actually says uh declan flynn recommends boundaries new pilsner if we haven't tried it yet so we must must look on the beer cloud to try and get some of that in actually for for the pilsner prowl uh parakyo has been in touch the king of pub snacks and why the correct answer is a bag of salted peanuts spilled into a bag of potato. Porik, there's nothing we love more. There's only, there's only one thing we love more than food, and that's beer. And food and beer together is fucking right up that alley. So he's talking about, I presume when he says a bag of potato, if someone only refers to a bag of potato, they're referring to the original cheese and onion potato. Because otherwise you have to premise it with smoky bacon or salt and vinegar. That is true. Yes. Or pork pork to, to do pork. pork is right, I think, in that instance. Um, uh, in, in, in uh, well, uh, sorry, I think the 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 cheese and onion is 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 what you would um, definitely go to initially, but. Um, I believe um, Port Leash Pub Club have. Um, replied to that comment with um, a, a previous poll uh, that uh, that they had created a few months ago uh, in terms of uh, I, I think it was kind of like a world cup of, of, of pub snacks and uh, cheese and onion crisps uh, won out outright with uh, bacon fries being a, a close second but Portlaoise Pub Club Peter that poll is the best snack to have with a pint of stout. And Pollock's question is the king of pub snacks. No mention of stout whatsoever. So, what I would say is, right, stout, yes, I understand stout, cheese and onion crisps. If we're talking about pub and we're talking about the broader range of drinks you can drink, Ale, pale ales, red ales, dark ales, lagers, stouts, fucking porters, you name it. Whiskies, hard seltzers, whatever you have in yourself. I'm going to say, right, and maybe this is the fact that I haven't been properly inside in a pub in over a year at this stage. Porrick's talking about a bag of salted peanuts spilled into a bag of potato. Now, I presume he's talking about pouring them in to the bag itself whereas we like to open the bag of potatoes up and pour the peanuts on which is different in itself but I think there's a missed market here you know the way you get like the um, what's that mix you get Bombay mix Bombay yeah right there's a snug cast mix to be made cheese and onion potatoes Salted peanuts and bacon fries all mixed together in a big bowl in the middle of a fucking table while a heap of lads and lassies have pints around that table. See, watch your, your, uh, it, it can't be in a bowl though. It needs to be in like a newspaper or something. You know what I mean? Yeah, right. In a gracie newspaper. Yeah, it needs to be in a gracie newspaper or like, or, a, or, or like, um, or a Playboy magazine or something. <laughs> Okay, you you, you. <laughs> are like okay, uh, what are the pubs in Kilcullen like? Or or magazine or FHM or something like that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh I, I think that's the way forward. I think that'll take over the pubs, the pub snack scene uh, post post pandemic. Um Oodles has been on. Oodles is a co-host of Modern Escapism. We had Stu one the co-host on recently, so big shout out to all the Modern Escapism crew. Uh, so oodles I constantly get berated by pals for being the stout drinker have you noticed any backlash from particular drinks you've defaulted to over the years and how do you combat the haters rocking up to a house party with a 12 pack of Guinness doesn't scream parte oodles I know for a fact you live in the UK nobody would look sideways at a lad to show up with 12 cans of Guinness to a house party in Ireland I think, no, oh. I think I think Oodles is just was just born in the wrong country. Yeah. No. Now let's let's take this from the Irish side, right? 
is there anything that you could show up to at an Irish house party uh, that you'd be ridiculed about? I don't think so, because like I, I think back, right, house parties, look, the last house party we were at was an impromptu one after a, like, fucking celebration event. Some, some yoke happened in Watford and we ended up accidentally inviting uh, uh, the party, the whole, the whole yeah. crowd, like yeah. So we we accidentally threw the last house party uh, that I was at. Before that, you're probably talking college days, really, in terms of proper hardcore house party. Because we're pub goers, we're not fucking house goers. Um, and I just don't, I don't think the culture of drink shaming is that big in Ireland. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I've just been very lucky in my experience. But I think if you showed up at 12 cans of Guinness to anyone's house in Ireland, they'd not bat an eyelid. I, I have one example, right? And it's it's about a lad who was going above his station, right? Well, that's so, different. Man. So this was a lad who brought a bottle of... Um, he bought a, brought a bottle of Grey Goose to a house party in college and he was drinking straight out of the Grey Goose bottle. So so I think he had it mixed in the Grey Goose bottle, like whatever he was drinking for the night. So say whatever, Grey Goose and orange or Coke or whatever the fuck he was drinking, right? Was 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 in the Grey Goose bottle. So he, this chap obviously went out of his way because you know what you're obviously meant to do is mix in the mixer bottle so mm. like if you had uh, like you know a pile of coke like as in because the coke is going to be three quarters of the drink anyway that you would obviously it makes sense to mix it in the coke bottle but no this chap mixed it in the grey goose bottle therefore you know he's fucking trying to but, just show off that he can afford grey goose like but the but even there right Sure, if you don't drink at all, then you've wasted a half of Grey Goose. Whereas at least if you don't drink at all, when you mix in the mixer bottle, you've only wasted a few, a few, a few subs of Coke. I know, I know, I know. No. Ab- silly business, absolutely silliness. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I th- I think he was trying. He's trying to say that oh, he had drank the rest of the Grey Goose and this was the end of it, you know. And he's but sure, I, it was probably fucking smart enough anyway. Like you know what I mean. The one thing I'd say to Oodles is. Uh, if, if cows are calving overnight, you'd often drink a slab of Guinness and try and climb over walls drunk to see him. To yeah. Him. So, like, I, I don't know. I, I just think Oodles is a victim of geography there. I, I went through a phase in college. I, I, second, I, I think second year of college, I was um, a big red wine drinker. Yeah, you sessions. were bad for the Wally's Hut. Wally's Hut, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I remember Centra, Centra there and uh, up by Sissy Young's. Six euro for a bottle of Wally's Hut, like you know, and it, it wouldn't it wouldn't set you astray. I think I actually missed our um, first year, first or second year ball, and um, because of it, you know. Yeah, happy days. Happy days. Happy days. Happy happy days. Uh, Oodles show up to any house party over here. You're you're welcome to any of our house parties. With a crate of Guinness. We any drink, look, any drink. We won't look sideways at you. In fact, we'll just tell you add it to the Guinness in the fridge. Yeah. Uh, and I think the last one I have is um is is my good friend Rob O'Sullivan. They've been in touch. Uh first question, does thou travel? Uh does thou travel on? Thanks, Rob. Um no, stout does not travel. I, I'm flat out saying it now. I had a pint of stout in Vietnam and it did not travel at all. And I think I've had stout abroad as well. I Like maybe, maybe it's a bit psychosomatic as well, but like definitely in like the likes of Spain and Portugal even, like it just doesn't travel like it does it's not as it's not the same is it i am going to completely dispel everything you've said with one sentence 
left hand nitro brewing nitro stout from Colorado <laughs> Phil Grimes pub on tap uh, it travels fine the it issue travels, is, yeah but maybe maybe, maybe that's like, maybe the, maybe that's the I was going to say it, maybe that's the milk versus the nitro or the you know that maybe it's so my my take on it is 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 the climate that you're drinking this out in. yeah so, if you you mentioned Vietnam, you mentioned Spain and Portugal. They're not climates conducive to a heap of stout. Like, whereas Colorado's cold, like South Park is a cold place, um, and Ireland's a cold place, and Britain's a cold place. See, there's also the thing as well. So, like, in, in, those, in those places that I've uh, spoken about, I've spoken about Guinness, right? That they, they've all been Guinness examples, right? It's a well-known fact that Irish and UK Guinness comes from St. James's Gate. Yeah. Whereas the rest are not. The only thing I'll say there is uh, Guinness is more popular in Nigeria than it is in Ireland UK, if I'm not mistaken. So, yeah. Nigeria, so Nigeria is a warm temperate climate so i don't know what it's certainly really cold there or what the crack is but but maybe but maybe they're just more used to maybe that's the taste of guinness yeah. that they have that they're used to whereas Possibly, yeah. i'm not used to it and it i yeah I, but does it travel i but see i think like it's a good question rob it's good yeah question. it's a great question rob and i think like stout is a family of beer so is it hard to answer do, like do we just view stout through the prism of uh nitro stout because God, we... they've, oh, they've nailed it they've absolutely nailed it yeah uh right so so rob's question has three uh, rob's tweet has three different parts and i think uh, they're all worked they're all worked uh quick flying uh quickly going over yeah best best pub games um, so just to go back to that right please everybody just write in for that answer because we're after a few cans here now oh, we're probably yeah. not thinking straight so please oh, this is my seventh fucking can like ch- chime in chime in i'm on the i've been on the pilsners all night so i i'm not in the stout frame of mind uh so ch- i'm just i'm switching I, to a stout now so chime like fuck lads um best pub games uh, yeah, so actually, right, what do you think when you think of a pub game? I'm not sure because pub games, like, I've been, like, I'm kind of a bit confused to the question. Uh, I've been to pubs where there's board games. Yeah. Um, and actually, Connect Four is a brilliant pub game. Yeah, right. So, so, right. Is that the question, or is it like, Kings, which no. isn't a pub game, that's a house party game, isn't it? Like, right? So, I was having this conversation with Kira earlier on, right? And I was having the same conflict as you were, right? And I was going, What's what? I was like, What's the best pub game? I was like, Sure, I don't play games in a pub, right? I'm like, I don't, I don't play, I don't like, like, is it a table it's quiz? A is, place. It's not a place for games, <laughs> right? But then Kira turns to me and she goes, What about darts or pool? Oh. And I was like, You're a ge- you're an absolute genius. Like they are, they're they're a pub, they are pro- pub games. That's what a pub game is. Darts or pool. Uh right. I think this oh wait, now you've reframed my tail ta- ta- Exactly, ta- exactly. And it's very clear to me. Put the pound down. Put the pound down, yeah. Put the pound down. Best pub game is pool, because darts can end up in fucking any pool doesn't. Yeah, yeah. Um, Actually, I love darts. I really love throwing darts, and we 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 played darts in in Phil Grimes once, and you were a much better dart thrower than I was, but you couldn't finish. Yeah, I couldn't throw a fucking score together, but but you could, I don't you need could double. Finish. You could finish the double. double. I don't need a second look at a double. Double team, yeah. Um, yeah, no, the, the pool table is a magical thing, isn't it? Like, because it acts as a table. It has kind of the surrounding 
atmosphere of it and, and you know it, and it, it can accommodate like about like eight lads around it you know who are chatting kind of half watching half getting out of the way whereas a dartboard although kind of magical for the two people that are playing and maybe you know one or two others who are kind of waiting a kind of scorekeeper like yeah but like the like the other group i think it, it kind of would lose the appeal or the watchability of the rest of the group if you know if and, and there's not as much of a surround around a dartboard yeah. for you for for you all to kind of like you know to talk around whereas at the pool table there could be actually about three or four groups around the pool table all having different conversations while two lads are also playing the which pool, which was definitely happening on your stag the pool table is like a kind of hub it is it is yeah uh good good question rob i think pool is i think pool is the correct answer yeah and uh my possibly my favorite question tonight best classic beer ad uh and and the reason it's my favorite favorite question is because for all my classics we're talking about old yeah and basically we like independent craft beer but like independent craft breweries don't have the budget the marketing budget to to create proper advertisements on national television so it's yep. forcing us to engage with the macro brewery uh, aspect of things. And then it's like, right, what's the classic and what are the best of them? Um, so, uh, again, right, I was, for this, right, I was thinking, right, because I, uh, 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 correct me now if I'm wrong, right, but yeah. the, um the 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 question on this was what is the greatest uh beer ad am i right best classic beer ad best classic beer ad right so uh, my mind immediately went to like tv ads right of so i was i was thinking of your the one with um michael fassbender uh jumping off the cliffs of moor uh, you know swimming over to the us meeting his brother blah blah, blah that one and you know a few of the kind of like, kind of guinness ads from back in the day right yeah but again kira love my life right sets me straight and she goes well, he said like classic beer ad, right? So this could be media of any type. So yeah. I was thinking back to like Guinness posters and like, or just posters in general back in the day, like, you know, and there's been some beauties. Like um, one of my favorites, I think was, do you know, there was that like a uh, Guinness um, ostrich one where like the ostrich had the point of Guinness in their neck. Mm. They'd swallow the point of Guinness, and you could see the Guinness glass in their neck. And there was like a gar, or like a garda, or something like kind of trying to reach up to them. Yeah, I, I, because I actually thought similar, and I just think, for me, the classic is, do you know that? Uh, you see it on the side of a lot of pubs, a really old ad, and it's just a. Uh, a big massive poster or a big massive like to do you see cast iron ones on really old pubs and it's like guinness for strength and it's basically a man holding a pint of guinness but also plowing a field by hand himself with big muscles oh that yeah 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 and no I, just, I do i just think about the era that that was advertising thinking fuck it like what that's absolutely fucking genius. Um, I get like Guinness have some absolutely classic Christmas ads as well. Oh yeah, actually that's very true. Yeah, yeah. And 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 actually, the, their Christmas ad uh, from you know six seven years ago is so good that they still use it. The James's Gate, the Home of the Black stuff uh, ad, um, which is fairly recent but is worthy of classic status because. It's so good that they just can't change it. Like, uh, genuinely, 
I'd say they're sitting around James's Gate Brewery thinking, how do we come up with a better Christmas ad this year? And every year it's like... I, just, we'll just lash out the same one again, yeah. You fucking yeah. can't, like... Um, I remember, like, there was um, an off-license in Waterford, which I think has closed down since, but, uh, like, they had this big, huge ad on the side of it. Uh, and it was, uh, you know, when they had, like, the, the toucan as, the, as their logo, or as their mascot or whatever? Mm. And it said one can or two can. <laughs> oh, it's fucking so good, like so clever, like the whole thing. Uh, I have to say, right, like I think Guinness came out on top for for adverts. But Carlsberg have had some brilliant ones, and and, and that tagline probably the best lager in the world has led to some brilliant advertisement campaigns, despite the fact it tastes like piss. Um, yeah. And there was especially around some of the some some of the uh some sporting events. Um and you know they've they've played on things like probably the best, you know, X in the world or Y in the world. Yeah. You know, they've they've been quite witty. Heineken as well have come up with a few good ones around the Champions League. Yeah. There's been the odd good ad. And I think they they've, they've said kind of like um James Bond ones as well. Yeah, yeah. But but I think of all them kind of like out of Carlsberg, Heineken and them, I think the best advertisements for that type of beer to me are the kind of like um Rocky Mountain refreshment ads yeah. from, from Coors Light. Uh having having like Jean Claude Van Damme or these really fucking tough guys, uh basically topless in the Rocky Mountains. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that kind of like I, I don't shed a tear kind of thing. Like, wasn't there, wasn't there a thing about um, is it just to go back to um, Carlsberg, right? That they had like because um, they had like you know probably the best uh, lager in the world for years and years and years, and then remember they went to uh, you know uh, it's not only option A and option B, there's always option C. And then, like, you know, so I think um, uh, there had that ad where there was, like, two boys in a nightclub and uh, they were, like, trying to chat up a girl in the nightclub. And uh, they were like, oh, you know, you're Irish, you know, speak speak some Irish to me. And, you know, it's just like, oh, it's even long Colleen Banya and all this kind of stuff. Remember that was like, oh, I'm, I'm a catacom dog at Ian Leheris. Like, and all, all, all this kind of, like, and play on kind of guys not knowing Irish and just trying to play it off as kind of a, a, a magical language. Um, but I think that 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 um, why they switch from probably the best lager in the world was because they were trying to make it into the uh, the Chinese market. I could be wrong now. It could be another Asian country, but I think it was the Chinese market. And that uh, probably uh, when kind of translated into uh, into Mandarin uh, translates as probably not, you know, it's kind of like it, whatever, but whatever way it is, it's, it's more of a negative to it. So if you say probably, it means kind of like a, a kind of an unlikely, you know, more so than actually, actually likely. So uh, if you say, oh, probably the best lager in the world actually means like maybe the best lager in the world you know it's it's not as it's not as uh, as as positive as we would put on it so uh so I, 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 that's why they ended up changing it which i thought was very interesting at the time like and yeah. i was just like would they not have a would they would they not have had like a like a separate like uh western and uh, and eastern um uh, uh, language option or, or ad options you know for it but um yeah they kind of they kind of uh, went full en- full on it for it at that time yeah i think for me like the the ad that kind of stands out um as the one that really sticks in the memory if i'm talking about tv ads from back in the day is do you remember the carlsberg broken down truck driver oh yeah oh my god <laughs> Where it's in Denmark and your man is like Carlsberg export. So he's export, he's bringing Carlsberg out of Denmark. Yeah. And his truck breaks down and he knocks Goes into a little cottage. Yeah, and it's this old one and, and she sees the Carlsberg export and she's like, uh, 
and he's like, can I use your phone? My truck is broken down. She's like, yeah, no bother. He makes the phone call. And then she's like, would you like to use the bathroom? And she like lures him into this like fucking drop and she locks him in. She's like, bye. And it's like, uh, Carlsberg, like so good. The Danes don't want it to leave. Kind yeah, of yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, so, uh, yeah. Like, Honest to God, right? As much as I hate Carlsberg, that ad was was marketing brilliant. Uh, yeah. So, so yeah, br- brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Um, question, fair, fair play, Rob. Thanks. Thanks, much. Rob. Um, we really appreciate it. So yeah, I think look, there's there's plenty in that here. We've we've got a fucking uh, we've we we've we've gone. Uh, we we we're not really we we're not really timing these these days. So I I think we've come to the natural conclusion of the episode. That's been it's been really fun. And um, oh, hold on, actually, Neil gave me a question before we finish up. Oh, actually, Kira gave me a question as well. So well, well uh, these are uh, well, my one's a quick one anyway. My one's very quick as well. Go, for it, go for it. Feeding cows, is it a circular feeder or a ring feeder? <laughs> um, I have no idea. Hey, she says ring feeder. I say circular feeder. Fucking bring on the lawyers. I, 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 I think I think ring sounds better. Like a ring feeder. A ring feeder. Bring up the ring feeder. <laughs> yeah, that's grand, but it's a circular feeder. So, like, you know, conversation over. <laughs> hey, if she wanted to defend herself, she could have fucking got poured herself a drink and come on. Um, uh, uh, Kira's question is, uh, what is your favorite glass to drink out of? Oh, actually, this is, this is it. Like, um, uh, what is this glass type? I'm, I'm terrible with glass types. Um, I think that's kind of like a little uh, schooner, is it? Uh, uh, I'll find out there now. Glass types for drinks. Uh, ten types of glassware for every bar means. Uh, that's and and this this type of glass is, isn't fucking on that. Um, hold on. No. I think it is a schooner. Is it, yeah? Yeah, if you if you type in schooner, beer glasses into you'll see it. Yeah, it's it's I see one here it says goblet, which doesn't make sense. Um yeah, schooner. Yeah, it's uh it, well I got we got this actually I'll tell you where I got this. Um Hannah's Hannah's um cafe in Fermoy. Uh, they had a lot of eight degrees beers and I actually bought a, I got a good few cans as a present of someone and they gave me these glasses. Well, I gave you a couple of these glasses as well, Owen. And, and, and I was going to answer that. They're my favorite as well. Like I've had I have a few different ones around the house. Like I have like um, proper, like kind of Guinness pint glasses and I have um, another those, pint those glasses. Those Brewing, uh, Kildare Brewing Company gave us some glasses of last year as well. Really yeah. long ones. They're really cool. But this this eight degree schooner kind of glass, um, I don't know. It feels like for the podcast, especially uh, doing shit like the Pilsner Prowl and the tasting and the kind of, it just feels right. It just, yeah. to me, it makes me feel. It gives me notions. <laughs> And, and and same with the little kind of the uh, this the kind of stubby hands as well. Like they're yeah. like a perfect fit in it as well. Yeah. So I'm a big fan of the schooner. Um, yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Kira. Thanks, Kira. Good question. So look, guys, that that's that's been the uh, the podcast for this week. Thanks, many for tuning in. We're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter at Snowcast. If you want to ask questions, the next time we do one of these in about two years' time, uh, you can find us on them. Uh, we're always open to your questions and, and suggestions for topics anyway, so feel free to get in touch on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. You can DM us, private message us, or you can ask us publicly. And if you want to send us an email, we're at the snowcast at gmail.com. Uh, very welcome, uh, very open to your um, email suggestions. We have a big announcement next week. Uh, big change. Um, nothing to be too concerned about now. But a big change. Uh, we, we've got something we want to announce. And uh, we've it lined up. It's 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 uh, something we're very happy with. Um, and as well, uh, if you want to support us, 
contribute towards our equipment and um, help us get better guests on the show than just ourselves. <laughs> when the pubs do open, you can go to www.patreon.com for our snowcast. Uh, we'd be more than happy to have you on board. Thanks everyone for tuning in. Owen, give some parting words to our beloved listeners. Um, if you have any tips for beating uh, Crash Bandicoot 1, uh, please contact me on um, at own tab on Twitter. Uh, thanks. This is like he's not married yet, but this is genuinely needed to save his marriage. Yeah, we got we got through three levels there tonight, so we're, we're happy. We're happy tonight, like, but could all fall apart partner tomorrow. Uh, so look, have have Owen's relationship in your thought and prayers as he navigates his way through the crash panic. Uh, many of us have been there. Um, actually, Owen, we should get Kira on the podcast to talk about Crash Bandicoot at some stage. <laughs> I'd say she'd love it. Yeah. Right, lads. Thanks a million for that. Uh, cheers. Mind yourself, staunch Steve Galear and sure look it uh, as Owen goes off to take a piss without stopping the recording. Uh, mind yourselves. Take care. And uh, I will say this much. Uh, Oodles has been in touch tonight with a question and Stu was on a couple of weeks ago. Give Modern Escapism a listen. It's a long podcast. Well worth listening. Uh, thanks a million and goodbye. If Owen doesn't edit this bit out from the podcast, you've had to listen to me singing this song that I've made up as I go on. We're still recording here, boss.